I think I need to put down the sword this this uh, particular review. I think the sword needs to go down, needs to be put aside for a moment. I think this needs to be lifted a little bit. I'm, I'm at disbelief at the moment. I don't know even how to react to this chapter. Should I be angry? Should I be going crazy? This chapter. Even Cone. Okay, even Cone is at a loss of words right now. He doesn't even know what to say. He doesn't have words for this chapter. This Bleach chapter, like, really, Kubo? Unohana? Really? So, we learn a couple things in this chapter. For the most part, we learn of uh, Unohana's Bankai. Seems similar to Aizen Shikai. Basically, I guess Kenpachi was like asleep or dreaming or this was all illusions of what was going on to him, what was happening, you know, this dying and everything. It wasn't actually happening. It was just illusions or a, a dream. He was put in this dream state. And that that's really where it was because, you know, we see his bones melting and everything. He's like, okay, uh, this is a dream. And he wakes up from it. So we learn what her bankai is. It's crazy that <laughs> Aizen, his shikai, was doing something like that. Probably even better. And this is her bankai. And Unohana's a beast. Just put that in perspective for a minute. How amazing Aizen is. That his shikai was probably stronger than Unohana's bankai. And this is Unohana for crying out loud. Uno freaking Hana. So we put it into perspective anyway. At the end of the day, the end of the chapter, for the most part, Zoraki killed Unohana, like, should I be mad, should I, should I be upset right now, that we're probably not gonna see Unohana any further, unless Kubo does one of his, uh, Biyapia things, Unohana's dead, Kenpachi pierced through her, she clearly said, there can only be one Kenpachi per generation, and Zoraki just impaled her, so, if this is the case, then, this is a brutal, passing of the torch, so to speak. And it fits perfectly for this type of scenario. But at the same time, we just got the build-up of this amazing character, Unohana. The, the, the awesomeness. And then to see her just die, it's like, I'm in disbelief right now. Should I be mad? Should I embrace the, the craziness of this brutal passing of the torch? I, I don't know. I, I know that the, the battle has been crazy. This has been an immense battle. Like, just picture this animated for a moment. Picture it. Now, as far as the chapter goes, very, very minimal dialogue. There was, like, a page with a lot of it, but then there was, like, constant, like, you could just keep going, like, picture, 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 bam. So, very light on dialogue. Really, this was just supposed to be a very, a message passing through. This is the passing of the torch. There can be one Kenpachi. Um, we did get something else. We see a panel where Kenpachi, as a kid, looked like he was dead in the rain. Now, does that mean that Unohana defeated him in the battle? Because during that battle when he was a kid with her, he held back because he wanted more of a challenge? So did he kill her, or did she kill him in that battle? Or was this afterward that she found him, like, seemingly dead in the rain and brought him back to life? Saying this could be the next Kenpachi. I think she might have killed him in the battle because he held back. Just me. Um, overall, chapter, I'm in disbelief. That, that's really what, what I can say. Um, Quality-wise, amazing. Just look at the message. The Kenpachis are so brutal that this is the way they pass the torch. You gotta kill the previous generation. You gotta kill somebody that builds the legacy in order to become the next. Overall rating for the chapter, I give it a 4 out of 5. Artistic, but at the same time, if this is truly the end of her, we never got to see her in, like, you know, the war... And at the end of the day, she would have been a large asset to our team. Powering up Kenpachi, even if he is stronger than her, doesn't necessarily, like, make up for her death. Wouldn't it have been more effective to have both of them? That's just me. Also, what do you think of her Bankai? Do you think that her Bankai, the dream state that she puts people in, is crazy? Honestly, I thought it would have been something completely different. I didn't really think it would be this illusionary dream state of mind. I didn't really think that, but... You know, it's it's satisfying. I will say it's satisfying. It's not the craziest thing. I thought it would have been really violent, like a uh, habankai immediately attaches to your neck and like slashes your head off or something. I thought it would be something crazy like that. So, not not the most craziest, but it's satisfactory. I would say. But either way, crazy. 
Unahana's dead. Let, let, let's have a moment of silence. Let's have a moment of silence. Unahana the Great. What do you th what, what do you think of this? What, what do you think of this, Colm? He, he's still at a loss of words. <laughs> Never know what to think of the chapter, though. In all honesty, good chapter, but it, it's just weird. It's like, should, should I be mad? Should I be... I, I, it's weird. Let me know what you think. Are you upset? Or are you going crazy? Like, holy shit, this was crazy. Like, this was epic. This is a brutal passing of the torch. What, what are your thoughts on this? And what do you think about Unohana's Bankai? Comment section below. Overall thoughts. But that's all I have for this review. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Thumbs up for Unohana. Thumbs up for Zaraki. The Kenpachis. They're, they're beasts. This is how they pass the torch. With murder. <laughs> Gotta love them. Up for Neverworld. And as always, people, have an awesome day.